Welcome again to EM Procedures. Today we're going to be focusing in on vascular access, in particular central line placement. As EM practitioners, we're expected to be very proficient in central lines. We're putting them in quicker and under more stressful conditions than any other specialist can. Now in this video, we're going to focus in on the more practical indications, preparation, and execution of central lines. We're not going to waste our time on things you can find in a textbook like landmarks for certain central line sites, but instead we're going to go over tips and tricks that my senior residents and attendings have passed on to me, and we're going to go over aspects of central line placement that you can only pick up by watching. Once you do decide that your patient does in fact need a central line, and you've chosen the location to place the central line, uh, it's time to choose what type of central line you're going to use. Uh, most emergency rooms nowadays have central lines placed in kits. And these are kits that you should definitely familiarize yourself with. Uh, like I said, there's a bunch of different types of central lines, but by far the most common are the triple lumen catheter, the cordis catheter, and the simple trauma line, which we'll discuss which situations to use which line. There are two different types of central lines you'd be placing in the emergency room. The first, pictured here, is a triple lumen catheter. As the name implies, there are three lumens within this relatively thin and long catheter. It's actually set up as a tube within a tube within a tube. Each tube has its separate IV connection port, but all these tubes come out in separate holes at the distal end of the catheter. The triple lumen catheter is ideal to place in a patient that will require multiple different IV meds uh, that may or may not be compatible with each other. It would also be ideal for a patient receiving IV pressors. So for example, a septic patient would be ideal recipient of a triple lumen catheter. The triple lumen should not be placed in any patient who needs volume resuscitation. So for example, a GI bleeder that's hypotensive or a trauma patient should not receive a triple lumen catheter. Instead, these patients should receive a cordis catheter, which will be discussed next. The cordis catheter, which is pictured here, should be your go-to line for emergency medicine for a couple different reasons. First, in respect to the triple lumen catheter, the cordis can be placed in almost half the time. In addition to being a very quickly placed line, you can also infuse very large amount of fluids in short periods of time through the cordis catheter. Because the catheter is so short and fat and only has one lumen, you can actually infuse uh, up to a liter of normal saline or lactated ringers as quickly as one minute with the proper equipment. Due to these characteristics, the cordis catheter would be ideal for your patients that will require large amounts of volume resuscitation. So for instance, these are your GI bleeders, your trauma patients or burn patients, or any patients that are in a code type of situation. Frequently, cordis catheter kits will not say cordis on the front. Instead of looking for the words cordis on the packaging, you should look for the distinctive L-shaped catheter picture on the front of most kits. Due to the unique nature of the shape of the catheter, you can actually introduce other catheters through the back port of the cordis sheath. You can introduce other catheters like a swan gans. You can place a temporary IV pacemaker through the cordis catheter. And you can even place a triple lumen catheter completely into the cordis introducer. Because of these reasons, if you're ever in doubt of what type of line you need to place in a patient if they do in fact need a central line, go ahead and place a cordis in them. You can always introduce a triple lumen through the back of them if you need so later on. The third type of line you may see in the emergency room is the trauma line. This line is a lot less common than the triple lumen or cordis kits. It's a no frills, short, fat catheter used for infusion a large amount of volume in a short amount of time. Uh, like the name implies, it's ideal for a trauma patient, also has some utility in resuscitation. Um, because it's a pretty simple line, we won't be spending too much time uh, discussing it here. Here's a quick recap of the differences between triple lumen catheters and cordis catheters that we've discussed so far. 
So the triple lumen is ideal for the patient requiring multiple different IV meds or IV pressors. So for example, the septic patient that's already been volume resuscitated, that would be a good recipient of a triple lumen catheter. The cordis, on the other hand, uh, is great for infusion of large volumes. So anybody who you think may need volume resuscitation, like trauma patients or uh, people losing uh, blood in their GI tract, uh, need a cordis catheter. That being said, the cordis catheter, while being very good at infusing large amounts of volume in short amount of time, is no match to two 14 gauge peripheral IVs when it comes to infusing a large amount of fluid. I am a big fan of the cordis catheter, but I'll take two large bore peripherals any day over a cordis. The bottom line is always default to put in cordis catheter if you're not really sure what's going on. If someone asks you with some urgency in their voice to put a central line in your patient, or if you think the patient's unstable or crashing in front of your eyes, or has already crashed in front of your eyes, put a cordis catheter in him. Okay, by now we've identified that our patient does in fact need a central line, and we've decided what type of central line we're going to place in him. The next step is to go ahead and gather all the supplies we're going to need to make this an efficient and seamless placement of a central line. There are two different levels of preparedness for placement of central lines in the emergency room. The first we'll talk about is placing a central line in a more stable patient. In this situation, we'll have a couple minutes to gather all the necessary supplies to make it uh, as comfortable as possible for the patient and to make the line as sterile as possible. There's a mental checklist that I'll run through to make sure I have everything I need uh, to place a central line as efficiently as possible. First thing on that list is obviously the central line kit. The second thing on the list is a skin cleanser, uh, maybe a chlorhexidine or a betadine of some kind. Nowadays, the central line kits will actually have something in the kit itself, uh, so you don't have to go looking for a separate bottle of uh, sterile solution. Um, but you don't want to count on that, so have it ready at the bedside if the kit does not in fact have it. Pictured here is the increasingly more common chloroprep sponge that has uh, chlorhexidine in the handle and a sponge on the tip. It's pretty convenient for cleansing the patient. It's in all of our central line kits at the University of Chicago, and it is my preferred method of cleansing the skin. Next thing on the list is what I think is the most commonly forgotten thing on the supply checklist, which is line flush. My views on line flush is you can never have enough of it. Uh, what I actually do is empty some line flush into a basin, have anywhere from 50 to 200 cc's of normal saline ready to go. Uh, it's essential for flushing out your line ahead of time, uh, clearing blood out of your line, or clearing blood out of your needle if you need to make multiple attempts at the line. Uh, how I go about doing it is take an IV bag, uh, having someone spike the IV bag with some IV tubing and actually empty the IV solution out into a basin before you go ahead and get sterile. While sterile basins are commercially available, what I'll actually do is use the container for the central line kit, uh, the plastic shell portion, which the inside of it is sterile, and I'll empty my IV flush into that basin um, before I get sterile. Another popular option is to have you or your assistant uh, put flush directly into the central line tray.